There are a lot of great characters in Genshin Impact, but some are much more valuable for your account, especially if you don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on characters and weapons only to find out that you could have gotten the exact same results without spending a cent. And that is the reason why I made this video. Hey everyone, Shark here and I want to go over the top 5 limited 5 star characters for free to play players. There are 3 things that all of these characters have in common. 1. They do just fine even very well with a 3 star or permanent 4 star weapon. In other words, you don't need 5 star weapons or even gotcha 4 star weapons. 2. They work in a ton of different teams and won't lock you into a specific team comp. And three, they make the game a lot easier. And I also want to mention that you don't need all of these characters. While they're all very good, you may want to go for all of them or maybe just one or two. Just go with whichever ones fit your playstyle or which ones you like the most because you can't go wrong here. Starting off the list of the top five limited five star characters for free to play players is the Moralist Moocher, the CEO of Geo, and the Wrath of the Rock, Zhongli. While you can build Zhongli as a DPS, the real value comes from the colossal amount of damage he can block from his shield. And luckily for us, he's incredibly easy to build for defensive utility. Now he won't hit very hard when you build him this way, but you'll be able to face tank basically everything in the game and not even blink. What's great is that this incredibly comfy build only needs a 3 star spear, the black tassels, and some HP% percent artifacts which you will get piles and piles of. Because Zhongli offers a very strong shield and is really easy to build, he almost completely nullifies getting knocked around and taking damage, making most of the game feel like it's on easy mode. And because of how useful this is, you can slot Zhongli into just about any team that wants some more defensive utility, making him extremely flexible as well as being very helpful. Next on the top limited 5 stars for free to play players, we have Watatsumi's watery fish priestess Kakomi. If you like Zhongli's ability to basically make your team immortal, while also being flexible in a bunch of different team comps, but would prefer having an elegant lady instead of an old man who rambles about wine, Kakomi might be just for you. Kakomi Kakomi can output tremendous amounts of healing while also having off-field hydro application which is very valuable. This allows her to both have a strong presence on or off-field which is really helpful for a lot of different team compositions especially because hydro is one of the best elements in the entire game. Whether it's electro charge, freeze, vaporize, bloom, hyper bloom, Kakomi is a great choice because she has a high floor, she's cheap to build, she has comfortable gameplay and sort of a set and forget it playstyle. She can also have really good personal damage along with her incredibly strong healing, or she can play a full support role giving a lot of really strong buffs to the team, the extremely useful off-field hydro application, and the tremendous healing on top of that. To top it all off, two of her best weapons are craftable and one of her best weapons is a 3 star catalyst. You can craft the prototype amber which is the best weapon for personal damage and the most generalist weapon, considering it not only buffs Kakomi but also offers a lot of energy regeneration, which is a great way to reduce her energy recharge requirement. You can also craft the Inazuma catalyst, the Hakushin ring, which is really good for Kakomi and electro charge teams. The extra electro damage bonus percent you get from the Hakushin Ring's passive makes running Kakomi with Fischl and Beto two of the strongest electro characters in the game even stronger. The other nice thing is that both the prototype Amber and Hakushin Ring can be used for an on-field DPS Kakomi or a support Kakomi. However, there is another support weapon that can even outshine these two and it's a 3 star catalyst. And that is of course a Refinement 5 Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers. Having the extra HP percent as a substat is nice for Kakomi, but the real value here comes from the extra 48% attack value that it gets to a switched in character. So Kakomi can make great use out of this weapon while also giving another character a massive boost in attack. So because the hydro element is so useful, especially off-field hydro, Kakomi works in a ton of different team setups. That on top of the fact that two of her best weapons are ones that you can craft and one of her other best weapons is a simple 3 star catalyst. And regardless of which weapon you choose, it's not only going to benefit Kakomi but also the entire team. And to top it off, Kakomi has a very high floor, is really easy to build, and heals so much that you basically can't die which makes the game feel really really easy. For those reasons, Kakomi is one of the top limited 5 star characters for free to play players. The next 
next character on the list is also a Hydro character, but this one focuses a little bit more on damage. I am of course referring to the very sussy secret agent, Yelon. Yelon at C0 has been fairly compared to Jingcho at C6, and that's extremely good news because Jingcho is one of the most busted characters in the entire game, and his C6 is incredibly strong. She's also very unique because her most important abilities, her skill and her burst, scale entirely off of HP. This means you can completely ignore the low base attack of various weapons and just go for the ones that give you the best substats and passive abilities. For example, the 3 star bow, the slingshot, is a really strong stat stick. In fact, this 3 star weapon you probably thought was trash can compete or even beat most other 4 star and even 5 star weapon options. If you don't need the crit rate this weapon offers, you can also put the recurve bow on her. This is again another 3 star bow that you probably thought was completely useless. However, the HP percentage on this bow do make Yulon's skill and burst hit a lot harder. And the recurve bow also comes from chests and monsters. Stat, so if you're brand new, you don't even have to wish for the slingshot. And while those 3 star bows are good, there is a 4 star bow that you get absolutely for free just by playing the story and it is her best weapon. And that is of course the Favonius Warbow. This significantly reduces the energy recharge requirements for Yelon and also allows higher investment into a bunch of different offensive stats like more HP, more crits, and more crit damage. But the other amazing side effect to using this weapon is it not only reduces Yelon's energy recharge requirements, but the energy recharge requirements for your entire team. This is why I run Yelon in energy hungry teams that don't even necessarily take advantage of her hydro application for elemental reactions. I love running Yelon with Noelle because the extra energy that she generates from the Favonius Warbow passive is very helpful for Noelle, and Yelon still brings the incredible amount of personal damage from her elemental burst. So we have an extremely easy to build, very high damage in character that can deal all of their damage off field. And that is the rarest combination of characteristics in Genshin Impact. Some characters are relatively easy to build and offer a lot of high damage output, but they need to be on field to work, otherwise you have very limited team choices. Some characters offer high damage and work off field, but need really good weapons and artifacts to actually achieve those high numbers. And there's also characters that are very easy to build and work off field, but their damage is very low or completely negligible. So because Yulon brings all of these factors together, is incredibly versatile when team building, and just so happens to be a character that can improve just about everyone's account, that's why she is also one of the top limited 5 stars for free to play players. The next character has received tons of showcases showing just how absurdly powerful she is, especially for people who wail. But the truth is, she doesn't require any amount of wailing, she is incredibly good at C0, and you can get a free weapon for her that's also incredibly strong. I am of course talking about the ruler of eternity and matron of some of the most complicated skill descriptions in the game, the Raiden Shogun. Raiden can function in a variety of different roles from on-field DPS, off-field DPS, an elemental mastery build Dendro Core Exploder for Hyperbloom, and so much more. When Raiden came out, I said that she was a character that's only going to get stronger with time, whereas a lot of other characters tend to get weaker with time. And my prediction came true because she is definitely definitely a lot stronger and a lot more useful now than when she first came out. Her kit that allows you to do off-field attacks while also making your elemental bursts stronger is just bonkers. On top of that, you can get one of her best weapons, the catch, for free just by fishing. And yes, I know that most people hate fishing, but just do it. It's worth it. And if a shark is telling you to catch every fish possible for this weapon, you should probably listen. Raiden is a really strong choice for a lot of different teams, and especially with the advent of the Dendro element, she's become even stronger. There is one caveat for Raiden, however, and it happens to be the same if you're going for Kakomi. That caveat is that you need to unlock Inazuma if you want to ascend them past level 40, which can be a real pain for newer players as they will have to play for a while before they get there. But for what they offer with team viability, how much stronger they can make you feel or how much easier they can make the game be, as well as how you can get some of their best weapons without wishing, it is totally worth it. The fifth character on this list is relatively new but will definitely go down as one of the best in the entire game. And that is of course, the little dendro baby radish god herself. 
Nahida. Dendro is one of the top elements in the entire game and it's changed the way we play Genshin. And Nahida is the best Dendro character we have and it will stay that way for a long time, possibly forever. One of my favorite things about Nahida is that the Dendro tether from her skill has a ludicrously large range. An enemy can be in Antarctica and they can still be tethered to Nahida's skill. And because her skill triggers a chain detonation of Dendro damage whenever you cause a reaction, this makes Nahida's AoE potential really really strong and while she works very well with really good characters like Fischl, Jingcho, or Raiden, she also makes the lesser played characters like Barbara and Lisa still feel really strong. This little dendro baby really does lift just about everyone in the cast to a new level. On top of that she has some very free to play friendly weapons including the thrilling tales of dragon slayers similar to Kakomi but also the Mapamare or magic guide to make her tri karma hit even harder. And while her personal damage can be off the charts, her elemental burst also buffs the elemental mastery of every member on the team. This means that the elemental reactions of everyone on your team just got amplified by a ton. With how easy it is to build Nahida, with how easy it is to build Dendro teams, and with the fact that you can still use Nahida with characters that are considered quote unquote bad and have a really good team, this little cabbage is going to be a staple for a long, long time. And those are the top five limited five stars for free to play players. But I've got a little bonus for you. I want to give you two more five stars that are really really good but I didn't include them because they don't quite fit the criteria very well and they are Venti and Kazuha. These are both extremely strong and game changing characters but they really do want four star weapons that not all players may have. And I know I see people run Iron Sting on Kazuha all the time and of course you can do that but most people who do run Iron Sting on Kazuha don't have nearly enough energy recharge and the Favonius sword is almost always a better option because of that. Likewise you can use the Favonius warbo on Venti but like Kazuha you're going to build Venti with a ton of elemental mastery so his swirls will hit really hard. This means that he's typically not going to have a lot of crit rate and since swirls can't crit it's also going to be a lot harder to proc the Favonius warbo's passive. So Venti really wants something like the stringless just like Kazuha wants the Favonius sword and both of those weapons are gotcha weapons. For that reason, I didn't include them in this list, but they are amazing characters and they can definitely be game changers if you get them. But it's really important to know that just getting these characters isn't enough. You're going to need to know what you should focus on to build the best team. Otherwise, you run out of resources really quickly, your characters are going to feel weak, and the game is going to suck. So if you want to know the best and most effective way to build your account that's also free to play friendly, I'll leave that video at the end of this one, as well as in the description with a bunch of other helpful guides. Guide videos. I love you all, stay jawsome, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.